All right, taking a look at question number four. It says, while your vessel's proceeding down a channel, you notice some range lights in line with your mast. It gives you your course of 001 degrees per gyro compass and a charted value for the range. It's asking you, what is the gyro compass error? In essence, what they're saying is the situation is thus. Your vessel is proceeding down a channel. And you see two range boards in line, so you know you're right on that. And it's saying that the chart tells you that this is 359 degrees true, according to the chart. But your gyro compass is reading 001 degrees per gyro compass. And it's asking you, uh, what is the gyro compass error in this case? Well, the thing you got to remember for gyro compass error problems is the uh, memory aid get. And what that means is gyro plus easterly error equals true. All right, so if you remember get, get, gyro plus easterly error equals true, you can then set up something like this. Your gyro was 001 degrees per gyro compass. We're looking for the error, and the true was 359 degrees true. So what's the difference here? Well, it's clearly two degrees, but um, the memory aid is gyro plus easterly error. So did we add easterly error? No, in this case, we would need to subtract, which means that the error is west. So 001 minus two degrees is 359. So the memory aid just is a way for you to remember the GET um, but in this case, our answer is going to be two degrees west. And then there's another memory aid you can use in this case, which is uh, gyro best error west. Now, this is one that I learned in school, but uh, it often confuses people because they were like, what does gyro best mean? Well, in essence, if the gyro number is higher than the compass, um, than the true value, then the error is west. And so that's where people get confused. They're like, well, 359 is higher than 001. But in this case, what we mean by gyro best or bigger is if it's further to the right. So on this compass here, I know this is a magnetic compass. It's just used as an example. Um, 001 is to the right of 359. It's better. It's a little bit higher on the list. So that's why that uh, memory it is used. So either one of these will work. Just don't get confused by the numerical value here. We're just talking about whether it's in essence, higher or lower on the compass scale. Either way, you would get it. Uh, in this case, the gyro is best, the error is west, right? The gyro is higher than the um, true value, so the error would be west. Or you could use the gyro plus easterly error equals true uh, memory aid. Either one is great. Looking at the other answers, um, one degree definitely doesn't make sense in either case, and then it's just a question of east or west. For question number five, it says, using the surface analysis in the illustration, what wind speed is reported at position Charlie? And it's just a bunch of wind speeds to choose from. So we need to look at the diagram that comes with the exam. And uh, here's our picture, and they're asking for position Charlie. And you can see choices A, B, C, D, and then there's a couple other choices as well. But in essence, they're asking us to interpret what does this wind barb signal mean? And I'll recreate it here. It's three barbs um, right there. And the best way to know this is that uh, on the wind barbs like this, the direction that it is pointing, or if it's an arrow, the direction that it's flying is the direction of the wind. So this would be a northwest wind in that case. Uh, but the question is not specifically asking for that. They're asking for the intensity of the wind, which is kind of governed by how many barbs are illustrated right there. And the simple translation, here's a good uh, illustration from Chapman's uh, for weather map symbols. If you've got a, a small barb um, that puts you in the 3 to 7 area and a big barb is 8 to 12. Um, the way that you would learn it for your exam is that each big barb is equivalent to 10 knots. So we've got 10, another 10, and another 10 which is going to give us 30 knots in that case. So big barbs are 10 knots um, some weather charts are going to say like 8 to 12, but it's 10 knots. And then the little barbs, those are 5. If you get up to a, uh, if you get up to a triangle symbol on your weather barb, that's going to be 50 knots. So a couple of different ways to interpret that, but you can look up online what these weather symbologies are about. Uh, but to answer this question, we've got 3 barbs, 30 knots. 
All right, for our next question, we're underway and there's a charted depth of eight fathoms. You compute the height of tide to be negative four feet. It gives you your vessel draft and it asks you asks you to determine the depth beneath your keel. And it's all given in feet. So you can see it's charted in fathoms, it's given in feet. We're gonna have to do a conversion. That's fine though. So the situation is kind of as follows. Here's the ocean floor. Here's the ocean surface. And it's maybe charted at mean, lower, low water. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. It could be mean, low water, whatever the chart datum is set to. Uh, that's what they're going after there. And you know, on a chart such as this one back here, this is uh, the depths are in feet. So here's 100 feet at mean lower low water, you know, 102 feet at mean lower low water, uh, but that's the datum of the chart. So the next piece of information that it gives us is that uh, the charted depth, say from here to the surface, is eight fathoms at mean lower low water. Um, and then it asks us to say that the, the height of the tide is negative four feet. So what they're saying is if you take the datum uh, where the water normally is, at this time, the tide is actually four feet below that. So it's like a negative tide, which is kind of rare, but good to know. And then it also asks us that the draft of our vessel is five feet, and we wanna know what the depth is beneath our keel. So our vessel, you know, is maybe floating on the surface here. And we draw five feet. So in essence, the problem is asking us to take eight fathoms minus four feet minus another five feet um, because of our draft. And how would we solve that? Well, you can't subtract fathoms from feet. Um, so you have to convert fathoms to feet, and there are six feet in a fathom, right? So that means this times six equals 48 feet. And then this is all kind of minus nine feet for these two here. And so what's 48 minus nine? Well, it's 39 feet would be our our answer. And then looking at the choices, we've got uh, 39, 43, 47, 57. So our answer is going to be 39 feet. So to solve this problem, we looked at what the, the charted depth is, eight fathoms. We subtracted the tide. It was a negative tide. And then we subtracted uh, five feet for our keel depth uh, and converted everything from fathoms to feet to make sure we're in the same units and came up with our answer there. So for our next question here, number seven, under the US AIDS to navigation system, a yellow buoy is what? A junction buoy, a special purpose mark, a safe water mark, or a cardinal mark? Well, our uh, answer to this is gonna come out of the light list. And in the light list, there's a section up at the front which uh, kind of illustrates the US AIDS to navigation system. And so they're asking for a yellow buoy, and this looks yellow to me, it's a special mark, maybe lettered. Uh, so we've kind of got our answer there, special purpose mark. But just to run through the other ones, uh, a junction buoy, it's actually not called a junction buoy. This is a uh, preferred channel mark or a bifurcated channel mark. But these are the junction buoys, and they uh, indicate which ways you can kind of travel. This might be a, uh, a junction buoy here, for example. The next option is a, um, a cardinal mark, and they don't have that here in the... Um, Light list, but uh, this is an illustration of a cardinal mark from the internet. And then the safe water buoy is the, um, this one right here, the safe water. It's also known as the Morse Alpha, the sea buoy. These are vertically striped with spherical top marks, red and white buoys. Um, so you can kind of see that leaves us with B, our special purpose mark right there. <laughs>